Today we go live on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast with Scott, Scott Sipker. He is the head of the new documentary about Niall Kinnick. We also get into some more concerning news about the Iowa Hawkeye wide receiver position all today on Locked On Hawkeyes. You are Locked On Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, John, and back with you another edition of the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Glad to have you aboard with us here today as we talk Hawkeyes with you in a little bit of a different conversation today as I am joined at the top by Scott Sipker as he is getting ready for the premiere of his new documentary on Niall Kinnick. Scott, always good to catch up with you. Good to see you once again, and it's not at our KXNO radio studios. Well, you're at your home pad, I'm on my hot at home pad, and it's good to see you got some Hawkeye gear back behind you. Yeah, yes, I do. I got this helmet, uh, and uh, I, the other helmets are above. But you know, for now, we're. I love. Uh, I I listen to Locked On Network all it like. I listen to Locked On uh, Bills, Locked On Pelicans, and a little less these days the Locked On Cubs. So this is my. I've always <laughs> been a listener. It's fun to be on this this network now. I'm glad to uh, have you a part of it here, and obviously for Hawkeye fans right now, a very exciting time with the launch of your new, your new documentary on Niall Kinnick. So let's start at the top. It's a story that I think every Hawkeye fan at least has some semblance of a feeling about. We know the big points, right? Won the Heisman Trophy, great team, a guy that many people thought was destined for great things in politics and then passed away early in his life. Besides that, though, I mean, this is much deeper. So outside of those most, most big salient points, what are people going to learn during this hour and a half, two hour documentary? So much. It's a it's a ninety minute documentary, and I've been telling people you're going to learn stuff for eighty seven minutes of it. Uh, I I like you had those bullet points growing up in in Iowa. You know, I knew the bullet points of Niall's life, but what gets lost in those bullet points is all of the space in between those bullet points is actually the more interesting the stuff that shows you his motivations. You understand the world he grew up in, not just in Adele, but geopolitics as a whole. And you, we really, I mean, there's so many moments I'm proud of in this film. Just one example is really breaking down that Heisman speech. We know the Heisman speech, but I know I didn't like have any real idea what he was actually talking about. Like, what's the Croix de Guerre? Like, I don't know. I didn't know what that was. And in the, in this documentary, we, we really kind of break down that, that speech and, try to help us all in a modern era understand why it was such a big deal. And that combined with his amazing performance in the 1939 season catapulted him to being one of the most talked about individuals in America in 1939. You know, that's such an interesting part of this conversation too, is we think of college athletes today and you think of Heisman Trophy winners and there's been great ones and there's ones that have been a little more forgotten throughout the years. But College football was such an important sport. He was not just the Heisman Trophy winner that year. He was also the AP player of the year. It didn't matter the sport. Explain that a little bit and some of the other uh, top contenders for the award that year. Yeah. So in, in 1939, the Associated Press looked at the landscape and they saw Joe DiMaggio hit 381 that year. And, and Joe Lewis had four heavyweight knockouts to defend his title. And yet the AP still looked at what Niall had accomplished with his fellow Ironman teammates in 1939 and decided he is male athlete of the year. Let that settle in. That is, it's extraordinary. And uh, I, I it just, I think as time has gone on, we, we have lost sight of Niall's national place in the conversation in 40. And we really think of him as a local kid, which he is, but he also had such an impact. And as one of the commentators at the time said, he was competing with Shirley Temple for America's favorite personality. And that's, yeah, wow, wow. And so Niall was a, he was a, he was a 
we're, we're lucky to be able to call him an Iowan. He represented us well. He represented his family well, and he certainly represented his country well. Another piece of this is something that's been thrown out a lot, that he would have been governor. He would have been president. You know, these kind of things. And, and they're grandiose, and maybe they're just something about people that pass away that is a nice thing to say. What is the likelihood of that? A career in politics, take it to that part of it, and why so many people said just those kind of things about Iowa. Yeah, the reason you say that stuff is because it's right there on the page in his own penmanship. He, his plan was, you know, to get through the war, find a nice girl, Mary, have a family, complete his law degree, um, and and get involved in politics. And he, he thought maybe he'd just be a country lawyer, but you could tell in his writings, he was thinking much bigger picture. And so while it is really unlikely that any one person would become uh, a federal senator of their state, or even less likely that somebody would become president. It is not hyperbolic to say those things were within the legitimate realm of possibilities for Niall Kinnick. When you factor in his fame that we just talked about, you factor in his style, his good looks, his athleticism, you know, because that just gives you this aura and his amazing morals and ethics plus the fact that his grandfather was governor of this state for two terms and he was explicit in writing that he wanted to become a public servant it is it is entirely possible if he could have survived the war that we could have looked at a Niall Kinnick as the republican nominee in 1960 versus jfk the democratic nominee and it is just think of how this world would have been different if Instead of the darling of the Republican Party back then being Richard Nixon, it was Niall Kinnock. And so his loss is a, it's a real loss. Certainly for sure we can prove that from the family aspect, but I think it's, it is fair. It, it's not, it's not gratuitous and it's not over the top to suggest he could have been a senator of the state. And, and I think he, he had even grander ambitions. Uh, I know it sounds ridiculous every time I say it out loud. Like people, you can't project that for people, but I think that's how extraordinary Nile was because I think it is fair to project that that was his potential. Oh, that's incredible and, and absolutely incredible. And to think of what that the presidency and, and that that campaign would have been between JFK and Nile Kinnick, and just how wild that oh. would have been. And Nixon, not exactly a, a beloved figure even before everything that, that progress. And, and you think about those two, just how different this world certainly could be. It's a great way to put it. Scott Skipker joining us here from the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast as we talk about the new documentary premiering here tonight on Wednesday evening as we speak the 24th. But uh, let's talk a little bit about how people can get this. You guys are having a run in Central Iowa in a the theater. Uh, fill people in, though. Of course, we have people not just across the stadium, uh, across the state, excuse me, but everywhere where people can catch this documentary. If you're in Central Iowa, you can go see it at the Palms Theater uh, in Waukee. You can uh, go ahead and search the Fridley Theaters and you'll find those run times. It's gonna be running a couple times a day from the 25th through the 31st at this point. We are in talks, I can't announce anything at this point, but I can tease that we are in talks to have an Iowa City run uh, sometime in September. So just follow me on social media uh, if you want to get up to date, if you are interested in seeing in the theater. But I know now most people watch things streaming at home and we are using the wonderful platform of Vimeo. A lot of smart TVs already have the Vimeo app installed, pre-installed, but you can download that straight to your, your smart TV or you can get it on your iPhone or your, any, any phone that you have, any smartphone. You just create an account if you don't have one already. You'll be able to purchase the film for $19.99 and then stream it to your TVs through your Roku or um, uh, Chromecast or whatever you use. And so that you'll be able to watch that anywhere in the world if you want. And it is, it is a purchase. So you'll have, you'll own the film, be able to watch it as many times as you want. That's awesome. And looking forward to getting a chance to see this. I've seen, uh, the promo a couple of times. I've gone through and watched the trailer just because it lends that excitement. And of course you, you hear the sound and you hear the voice and what we hear in Kinnick Stadium before every game, but there's just so much more into it. Next, Scott, I want to go into now I'm a football player. He was a little guy, but it was also a different time period. We're talking about you know, football being played, what, 
80 plus years ago. So it was a different time. Is there a correlation to a player today that you would think about? A, a poor, I know football is so different. He was running, he was throwing, he was doing everything. And that's kind of what your best player bet did in football back there. But do you have a, a comp, if you will, in today's football environment? It, uh, not football, but I'll go Shohei Otani. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Nile, Nile, you know, like Nile just could do it all. He, you know, and, and you know, if it was a modern, he had modern science and all that behind him. I think he's a Christian McCaffrey type. You know, mm -hmm. I, he he was quick for his time. Um, you know, undersized a bit, uh, but you know, at the halfback position, you can get away with that. He was very well built, solid. Uh, they, you know, they had talked about like when you'd see him in his prime and without a shirt on, it looked like his chest was carved out of rubber uh he was but he was a really good passer of the football both right and left-handed he <laughs> could obviously run the ball really well he was the nation's leading punter his sophomore year and the notre dame game uh in 1939 he punted the ball 16 times which is still the iowa record okay he was also the drop kicker okay who had the game winning point drop kicking against notre dame uh Oh, and can I throw this in for good measure? He he also still holds the cycle or the uh, the Hawkeye single season interception record that Desmond King just tied a couple years ago. So he could do it all. And I, I just slipped up and said the cyclone thing there because his dad was, and he was also a drop kicker at Iowa State. And so uh, when I was thinking of the drop kicking, I was thinking of his father who taught him. They had a barn in Adel where when he put the hay mow down, it was about the same height as uh, the goalposts were. And so him and his dad would just drop kick balls into the barn for hours at a time. And so Niall was just an all around athlete. And back then the substitution rule was that if you went out in a quarter, you couldn't come back until the next quarter. And so it was much more aerobic. And, and Niall had all the aerobics he needed. Uh, a lot of that credit goes to uh, coach Eddie Anderson who ran the hell out of the guys in the, in the lead up to the 1939 season, which is why so many guys quit and they didn't have very many. And almost all of them had to play both ways for 60 minutes, which is where the name Iron Man came from. Scott Sipker, as we're talking about Niall, the documentary, Niall Kinnick, and uh, excited for this one. We talked about football. We talked about politics. You also mentioned talking about settling down. One interesting thing I heard you uh, talking about in one of your interviews about a date he was on down in Kansas City bit of a ladies man a, a young man we think of 1939 and well scott when you and i are in college it was a little bit different certainly but he's dating models he's he's living the good life now was on the pursuit for a wife there's no doubt he enjoyed the attention uh he was a serial dater i mean he was out there trying to find the woman he was going to settle down with and yeah he <laughs> And of course he was very popular uh, for all the reasons he was going to be president he could have been president the same reason he did well with the ladies okay and he you know one of the my favorite stories is uh when he was on base in training in kansas city he was on a date with a girl and uh, he lingered a little too long probably in the driveway and so <laughs> he had to speed back to base and got pulled over for speeding uh, luckily, he was still able to make it to base on time for a curfew. But, you know, I, I just love that aspect because we don't think of Niall being nervous going on a first date or, you know, like tr wondering, like, should I kiss this girl? Like, is this like what? But that's that's how you relate to him. I mean, he's like us. And I just find it so charming and endearing uh, that he had those experiences. And he, he I did speak with one lady. Uh, who, who's in her 90s, who um, actually got to dance with Niall. And she just said he was just the best dancer. <laughs> and you could tell even now. And this is one of Niall's friend's girlfriends, right? So there was nothing romantic about it. But it was just like you could tell Niall still left an impression. He was a man, even though he was a, a tad shy, who when he walked into the room, you knew he was there. He had that type of magnetism to him. So we know the story. What led you down this path? What led you to to tell this story, to put this as a documentary where people, not just across Iowa, but across the country, get to know more about Nile Kinnick? 
Well, first, I just couldn't believe nobody's done it before. Uh, Niall has a great story and grew up in such an interesting time, maybe the most interesting time in, in American history and, and certainly up there. With, uh, and then there's a practical approach. Like I want to be telling stories. I want to tell them in film form. And I would love to bring Iowa stories to a national audience and make profitable film. Uh, the only way for my career to continue on and to be able to tell these stories that I want to tell, like the Jack Trice story, the Duke Slater story, like the Kate Shelley story, uh, is for us to prove we can make a profitable film. And I looked at it and I was like, we have a, a great subject matter, a great character. We have a built-in audience, not just Iowa Hawkeye fans, but but we are a college football crazy state. And even though this film is probably only 20 or 30% sports, uh, it, it still appeals to that audience. And Niall is like on the, he's on the coin that starts every Big Ten game. So he's a name that Big Ten country knows. And I think that, especially now that Big Ten country stretches all the way to California, uh, we have a pretty big uh, <laughs> audience that we can build into. But knowing that I've always thought the reason I didn't move to Los Angeles to become an actor and a filmmaker is because I looked at the landscape here in Iowa and I thought the greatest trampoline that I can have is the kindness and generosity of Midwesterners and Iowans specifically. And if, if they, I'm, I really think once people see it there, it's going to connect with them. Then I'd much rather stay here and deal with this weather instead of deal with the Los <laughs> Angeles traffic. Good way to put it, Scott Sifter uh, with us here. Hey, Scott, it's been a lot of fun getting to uh, talk a little bit about this film and what it's going to be. One more time for people, if they missed it earlier, how they can get involved both in Central Iowa with the theater and then also people across the state, across the country, where they can catch it. It's going to be playing at the Waukee Palms Theater of uh, August 5th, 25th sorry, to August 31st. And it's available on Vimeo on demand tonight at August 24th at 6 p.m. Just search that on Google, it'll take you there. Uh, and if you wanna stay up to date with any other theatrical runs that might be added, just follow me on social media. I can promise you that I will be over the top in how much I will be talking about this documentary. Well, we'll hear from you a lot, looking forward to it. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. Somehow Siri just heard me make a reminder to set my calendar for August 24th. So I don't know if you heard her in the background, but she just started yelling at me. But thank you so much. I'm so happy to be on the Locked On Podcast Network. This is great. You made it. You made it, Scott. You made it. Hey, thank you. Scott Sifker joining us here. That will do it for today. We'll be back with you tomorrow with more Locked On. Tomorrow, we're talking about Iowa football, get into a lot of pieces. Nico Regani and into him. What does that mean for the Hawkeyes? We'll talk about that. Thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen each and every day here. And don't forget about Lockdown Big Ten. Nate Dickinson each and every day gets you locked on the Big Ten with Lockdown Big Ten. Again, Lockdown Big Ten each and every day here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Also, want to say thank you to Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to check in. On your bet needs, find all your favorite sports events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews, news for every league, MLB, NFL, getting ready for season, esports, even golf. They have you covered. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for your sports wagering information. Live in game betting, scores, and podcasts, they have you covered. Go to Bet Online today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the action. That's happening today. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. So, as we wrap things up here on a Wednesday edition of the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast, I do want to talk a little bit about what I mentioned, Nico Regani, that injury and, and the wide receiver concerns that continue for this Hawkeye team. It, it is a big time problem for them, a big time question. Now, we've talked about Keegan Johnson, just his importance to this team as he's back, but how back is he? We saw the picture a week ago. It got people excited, but we continue to see reports that he's not exactly there and uh, not going at a high, high level through practice. So that's a concern. You couple that with what's happening on the other side. You have basically two scholarship receivers that are going through practice right now. It's going to be up to the walk-ons to step up in a big-time way. You're going to have to see 
a, a Nate Wetchin. You're going to have to see a Jack Johnson. These are going to be the guys, Alec Wick, that are going to have to step up, and they're going to have to play big-time minutes for this team this year in a year where we anticipate they're going to take a step forward, in a year where we think this Iowa team is going to look a whole lot different offensively with no wide receivers or only a couple of scholarship receivers. It becomes a very, very scary situation. We'll get into that a whole lot more as the week progresses. Tomorrow, my buddy Jace will stop by. We'll do our Degenerate Hawkeyes Locked On Hawkeyes podcast coming up tomorrow. We'll talk about some wagering lines. We'll get ready for the football season, getting closer and closer to kickoff. Thanks for joining us here today on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast.